In session five of phase two, this is uh, where we cover the church covenant. So you should have gone through uh, what is a healthy church, the nine marks there, and watch the video, of course, of the uh, 11 marks I talked about. A couple sermons in there, again, on uh, elders and deacons and covenant and things of that nature. So hopefully those are helpful for you. In this, in this last session, uh, we're talking about the church covenant. Now, why, why do we have a church covenant? Uh, well, it, it, it's a covenant. It's an agreement that we're entering into between us and other believers. And so we have a church covenant. It's, uh, it's written and been adopted by our church members. It's been tweaked over the years. Uh, we have uh, it hanging in our sanctuary and something that we recite regularly. Now, now, what is it? Well, it's really a summary of a whole bunch of scriptures uh, put together. And so uh, you should have a copy of this, and it so it'll say First Baptist Church of Cedar Key Church Covenant. And it has end notes, which are all the Bible verses uh, that these uh, truths come from. And so it should be helpful for you as you look through uh, the church covenant. And you can look up those Bible verses if you'd like, if you're not familiar with them, and see that really the church covenant is just a, a summary. And it's really talking a lot about the one another passages that are in Scripture. See, we're commanded to love one another and serve one another and bear with one another and forgive one another and all these different one another's. And that's really what the church covenant is. They're saying we're going to do all these things and we're committing to this. We're going to be in covenant with one another about it. Part of the reason that there's a covenant is because it gets hard to do these things at times, but they're commands from the Lord, and so that's why we continually do them. And so uh, I'll read over this. You have a copy of it as well. You're supposed to read through it and make sure that there's nothing that you disagree with and that you would be able to commit or covenant with others to do this. Uh, we take this seriously. And so um, let me read this to you. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully covenant with one another as one body in Christ. And so because we're Christians who have been baptized, we're followers, we're making this covenant together is what that's saying. We endeavor, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, we understand that we're going to work hard to do these things, but we need the Spirit's help to be able to do anything uh, that is good. And so the, the Spirit must help us to walk together in Christian love to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully, sacrificially, and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, uh, the aid of widows and orphans, and the spread of the gospel to all nations. We are going to commit ourselves to make sure that we are worshiping. We are going to commit to give. Now, what do we mean by that? Of course, in here it says... Um, cheerfully, sacrificially, and regularly. So we don't have a percentage that you're supposed to give or you must give to be a member here. Um, it's whatever is sacrificial for you and regular and that you can do joyfully. We, would, we can come alongside of you and help you in that understanding, uh, but that's up to you. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the, and then it shows the expenses of the church. What do we use that money for? And it's listed there. We also endeavor to maintain family and personal devotion. So part of what you are agreeing to is that you're going to work on your own personal devotions and family devotions, okay? To educate our children in the Christian faith, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to live in the world but not of it, to be just in our dealings, faithful in all of our engagements, exemplary in our conduct, and to avoid all gossip, backbiting, and excessive anger. To seek God's help in abstaining from practices that bring unwarranted harm to the body or jeopardize our own or another's faith, we will also not forsake the gathering of ourselves. So again, these uh, different things that are in Scripture that we're committing to, we're making a covenant. Um, this means we're making a covenant that we're going to evangelize. Uh, that's in here. We're going to avoid um, gossip and backbiting. Does that mean we're never going to do it? No, no, but we're going to repent and work our, uh, our hardest not to do these things. Um, we're going to be just as business people, those who work. We're going to work into the glory of God. And so whatever our job is, we're going to be faithful uh, to do that uh, to the best of our ability. Uh, fourth paragraph, we further endeavor to watch over one another in brotherly love, to pray for and seek unity at all times, to live at peace with all as far as it depends on us, to remember one another in prayer, to aid one another in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the guidelines of our Savior to secure it without delay. We're saying that we're going we're gonna to seek to walk together and love one another and, and help one another, pray for one another. If somebody gets sick, we're going to take care of them. 
Um, we're always going to be ready to be reconciled, and we're not going to hold withhold forgiveness. That's not what Christians do. We're going to have a posture of forgiveness for when people come. Um, we're going to be slow to take offense. We're not going to believe the worst about people. We're going to believe the best, and we're going to believe the best of their motives. It's it's not our job to, to try to guess and figure out why people are doing something. Um, we want to believe the best and believe what they say until there's reason otherwise. Uh, it ends with, we moreover endeavor that when we move from this place, we will, if possible, unite with the with a church where we can carry out the articles of this confession and the spirit of this covenant. We've had people move away uh, from here. And so part of what they're agreeing to is when they leave here, um, we're going to help them find another church, not exactly the same, but a, a healthy church that is uh, at least similar in many ways. And so we have had people move. And so I call and I try to reach out to other churches and say, hey, we have somebody moving. Uh, they want to come try out the church. Would you meet with them so we can transfer their care uh, to somebody else. And so uh, people move away and they're still members of ours for a while, but the, the, the idea is that you're to be an active living member of another church. And so once you move away, you would move your membership as you're supposed to do. And so uh, this covenant, again, is a useful tool, a summary of scripture that we use. And so read over it, make sure that there's uh, no concerns you have. If you have any questions or comments, contact us and um, then we can move on from there. So that would end uh, phase two, which uh, just so you know, as you finish this section, phase three would be that written text testimony. And so uh, either uh, you could do a video or just write down how you became a Christian. This doesn't have to be a whole life story, but how were you lost and then you got found? How were you dead and then you were made alive? Uh, how did you become a follower of Jesus? For the church to affirm you as a follower of Jesus, they need to hear your testimony. Sometimes we have people who come to faith while they're here uh, and they're, or their baptism happens here, and that is the testimony, and so they don't need to do that. But if if you're moving here and you're not going to be baptized, you're already a follower of Jesus, then you would need to uh, let us know. And if you need help with that, again, reach out. We can help you, show you some examples of others in the past. Um, also, you'd submit to us the, the church that you're currently a member of, if you are, or that you have been, so we can contact them and make sure that you are uh, in good standing with them and not under church discipline, for example. And if you were, then we would say you need to go back and be reconciled to them before we would accept you into membership here. Um, from there, uh, the elders will reach out to you, and so once you've done those things, they'll reach out to, again, share their testimony with you and hear your testimony and um, just get to know one another so that way you can submit to their uh, leadership in your life um, and they would um, be willing to um, shepherd your soul and give an account for you before Jesus. And so that's when the elders would vote, and it'd have to be, again, unanimous that we would uh, we'll put you forward for membership. Then it would happen at the next church meeting, um, uh, church uh, members meeting, and then from there we'd present you to the church. So that's the, the steps, uh, the different phases and the sections of phase two in particular. If, you, again, you have any questions or concerns, contact us, and we're thankful for this opportunity to walk through this with you. We're praying for you. Look forward to contacting you or you contacting us after you've completed this step.